welcome to Reality Tea Times 2, the podcast where we discuss all the trash reality TV we love to hate. I'm Janika, and today we are going to be discussing Selling Sunset, episodes 4 to 6. That's what we're going to be doing in this episode. So, again, we don't do any ads, no nothing. Let's just jump right in to the episode. So, Episode four is titled Sending a Secret. So we are in the office and we are talking about, you know, each other's kids. Brie is feeling a little awkward though in this moment because obviously she is quote unquote sitting on a secret. And Chelsea, she says, we'll probably shoot the messenger, even though she is just the messenger. Hold on to that. So we ring the bell for Jason because he has sold a house for $28 million and we're going to go out to lunch to celebrate. So we see these two guys that I think Chelsea knew. They're, they're British, so I don't know, whatever. But they are fucking hot. Like, hot. They will come, they will make an appearance again. Very slight appearance, but they will. I get to see them again. It's great. Their names are Connor and Joey. So, anyway, we're going to be going to Pioneer Town next week, so that's going to be fun. Bree is not going to be going, though. Jason is also not going. He doesn't want to go to Pioneer Town, which, why not? It kind of looked really cool. We'll talk about it. But Chelsea doesn't want to go either, but she will go. She says that she will go, but she, you know, she kind of wants to stay home with her family, you know, like... She doesn't really want to go, but she will go. She She's probably going to have FOMO if she doesn't. So we are at a house, as always, with Amanda, and she is struggling to open the sliding door. She's like, has it been this long that I don't remember how to open a door? <laughs> and um, the house is all staged and it's ready to go, ready to be photographed. And I think this is the house that Jason gifted her or the guys gifted her for her birthday. <laughs> I'm the listening. And this house doesn't have a pool, which I think like, I mean, the house, the view, it's great. But I feel like I've, you very rarely see a house in LA that doesn't have a pool. <laughs> you know, it's weird. Where's that pool? Anyway, and there's no place to even build a pool. So like, there's no way you could have a pool in this house. We, um, we have a full moon even though the sun's out, there's a full moon, which I think Amanda says explains everything. And Chriselle, apparently, this is why she says explains everything, because there's going to be some more drama. Chriselle apparently was nominated for a GLAAD award, which is, you know, great for her. And she kind of texts everyone in the um, in the crew, the texting, the text group, to say that she had been nominated. And everyone's congratulating her, blah, blah, blah. But then Grishella decides to make a dig for no reason about Nicole and kind of saying her being a homophobe and kind of stuff like that. And it's just like, okay, you didn't have to say that. You could have left it alone. And Amanda says as much. However, Nicole being Nicole kind of, you know, fired back and was, you know, kind of upset, I guess, that people were congratulating her. I don't know. Both of these women, like, I like Rochelle. I don't particularly like Nicole. I like, I like Rochelle. But Rochelle, you're a 40-something-year-old woman. Can you please not say what you're going to say? Move on. Like, it, I know it's the show, but it's just so childish, you know? Anyway, Chelsea and Mary are meeting up to, I guess, squash the situation. Chelsea arranged this actually to, you know, get over it and get all get, up, get this all out on the open, which is really good of her. I'm 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 proud of her in this moment. She says, you know, when you pulled me aside, I thought you were going to apologize. And Mary, Mary, god damn it. Mary's like, so what? What do you mean? Even if you didn't mean to say something, like, to be vindictive, honey, you said it. 
So that's what you need to apologize for. I understand Chelsea's reaction to it wasn't the greatest and you felt attacked, but you still said it. You're, the reason you felt attacked because of something Chelsea said is because of what you said. You started it. That's what you have to apologize for. Like, uh, come on. For what? Come on now. Anyway, Mary she says she didn't feel good at the party. She felt embarrassed by everything. And Chelsea does apologize for coming at her the way she did. She says, you know, I tend to resort back to my 20s, which, I mean, she's only been like 30 for like less than a year. But anyway, she tends to resort back to her 20s because it's kind of her defense mechanism, which I think we can all understand. And Mary starts crying because she's like, I've always been judged since I was 15. Obviously, due to her having a child at a young age, she felt ostracized. She, she said she pretty much was shunned from people in her life for being 15 and, and pregnant. And um, she said she doesn't want anyone to feel the way she did. And I think like, she's starting to kind of get it, but this definitely seemed to, like, their relationship is never going to be as it was or what it could be, I guess, if it weren't for this. But it it has definitely put them on a level playing field and has definitely helped. So it was really good. Listen, y'all, this is the episode for forgiveness. Let's get to the next thing. Um, I kid you not, when I saw Maya on my screen, I about flipped. I cannot explain how much I love Maya. Maya was always my favorite person. When she left, it hurt. <laughs> like, I love her. Because even though this is like a scripted show, let's be real here, Maya feels so real to me. And I really, it's, it's probably why she's, <laughs> she has bigger and better things. She's doing so amazing for herself. But she felt like the realest person there besides like Rochelle, but because Rochelle is, Rochelle has hopped on the, let's, she, she's an actress, let's, let's not forget. But um, she, um, she was always the realest one for me. So when I saw her, I'm like, oh my God, I, I love her so much. And I was so happy to see her on my screen. Love you, Maya. Anyway, so she's here. And Grishel and Brie are also meeting up with her. And obviously Brie doesn't know Maya, but it's fine. Maya was, uh, has her own brokerage. And Emma, she shows up here as well. So we have, just to make, make sure everyone was saying so, we have Maya, Grishel, Brie, and Emma. We talk about what it means to be a girl's girl. Because, and this is what I love, I love Maya. Being a girl's girl doesn't necessarily because Brie says she's not a girl's girl. Brie is not a girl's girl. Honestly, I'm not a girl's girl either. But what I loved about this is saying someone is not a girl's girl, it, it kind of gives that negative connotation, right? Where it makes it seem like you'd be a person who would basically sleep with with your friend's husband or kind of thing. And that's not always what it means. It just kind of means, I mean, you, you're you supportive and you are down for the people in your life and you do anything for the people in your life. That is so true. Like I would be there no matter what for the girls in my life. And I'm also not going out there and <laughs> sleeping with my friends, men. I got my own, nor would I ever if I didn't, you know, like, it's you're not necessarily a girl's girl but you're there for the people you love and it's true um so yeah i, I think that was great so cause even though brie as she titles herself is not a girl's girl i don't think brie would necessarily sleep with like her friend's man you know she's going to be down there for the people she loves so yeah. So then we start contemplating who would get fired in the office. And everyone agrees it would be Nicole because of her behavior. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
um, that will never happen. No, it never happened. I, as long as you keep selling houses, that's never going to happen. Chriselle says Nicole got upset with people saying congrats to Chriselle for her GLAAD nomination. I don't know. Did she actually win the award? I can't remember. Anyway, that's basically that. We are going to see more of Maya. Maya's not gone yet. So we're here with Nicole at a house. Alana is also here because I think this is Alana's listing, I think, or potential listing. This house is only 1,200 square foot. That's about the size of my house. That's so crazy. But they talk um, the whole Chrishell drama, which what I love about Alana, it's Canadian in us, she is kind of like, listen, I'll hear you out, but I'm not getting involved. Okay, that's your deal. That's your drama. I'm not getting involved in your mess. This is Canadian on us. We're not gonna, we're not gonna, I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna sit back with my popcorn and watch the drama, but I'm not gonna get involved. Don't get me involved. I have my own, you know? So, but um, she said that even though she doesn't want to necessarily be involved, she has heard people say that, no, like, she has heard that Nicole has been labeled a homophobe. If we remember, if, if no one remembers, it is kind of brought up in the episode. I don't pinpoint, I don't, I don't have notes for it, but I'll say it. For those who don't remember, in the last reunion that, that was done, it came up that Nicole kind of positively acknowledged someone's comment to Nicole about Chriselle sexual orientation, her being, I don't know if they use the term fake lesbian or, or all of a sudden she's a lesbian or something like that. I don't know. But Nicole didn't shoot down the comment. Instead, she disagreed with the fact that this person doesn't like Rochelle and she hopped on that, which gave the air of, are you a homophobe, right? And everyone kind of didn't agree with Nicole in this comment, even the guys. So it's, it's, wasn't a good look. So that's kind of what this is coming from. So we're back in the office and Maya's here to say hello to everybody. And then Nicole comes and her and Maya talk for a bit. And so basically they kind of talk about the whole thing. I kind of can't read with something I said here, but it kind of, they're talking about the whole situation with Rochelle and Maya kind of says, what you need to do is you need to take accountability for what you, for what you did. And or I think Chelsea, sorry, Chelsea says that you need to take accountability. Um, and the guys jump in at this point and they say, yes, like you need to take accountability for what you said. We don't believe you are a homophobe, but the issue is the fact that you didn't shoot, like say, uh, uh, to this comment or like you just saw, oh, this person like Rochelle either and just went for it, not realizing how it looks the rest of that comment. You say you're not a homophobe. I, I believe you. I don't think Nicole's a homophobe, but you're so blinded by your anger and your hatred for someone that you completely ignored the biggest problem in that comment. So she starts to say, you know, I shouldn't have engaged, but I shouldn't have engaged, but that's what she starts to say. And the guys are like, no, no, no buts no buts because that basically cancels out what you just said you know and she's like but i'm trying to explain my where my head was at that is okay that is fine but right now right now you need to start off by saying i acknowledge my part in this and i apologize for it how you feel is secondary to that or how you felt is secondary to that. That needs to come first. And she, like, she feels like she's being gained up on. She feels like people aren't listening to her. And she starts to cry. And she's like, I need a minute. And she's like, and I think people think she's not going to, like, apologize or anything. But she's like, no, no, no. I need a minute because I need to process what I'm about to say. And I think Jason it was Jason that goes to her and is like, I understand this is hard. I understand that like, I know you're a good person. 
And I think there's no doubt she is a good person. I don't, she's, she's growing on me this season so far, but like, there's no doubt she's not a good person. But you need to take the accountability. You need Grishel to understand where your head was at because Grishel is also a good person and can see both sides of things. So she does come back out and she just says, I'm really sorry for what I did. I do support you in your relationship or whatever it is. I support you. And she's really emotional and vulnerable and believable. I think that's the the biggest thing here. Sorry, my voice. Very believable. And I think with the emotion that she's feeling here, Grishel does go and she hugs her. And I thought, oh, this is all we wanted. I love this. And she says, thank you. That's what I wanted to hear. And Nicole says that she, she's ready. She wants to move on. And now they can. And... They say, you know, let's lighten up the mood, you know, let's get out of this, lighten up the mood a little bit and have some wet pussy shots. A what? It's a drink, but it's called a wet pussy shot. What is happening? Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically it for episode four. We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back. We will hop in with episode five. And I am back. So let's jump in with episode five. Once a Lana time in the West. Forward. Let's get into it. So a man's with outfit, first of all. It's very cute. What was she wearing again? I know I said it was cute. I can't remember what she was wearing though. Anyways, then she um goes shopping for some some boots for Pioneer Town. Um, I think, yeah, her, I think Rochelle too. There's someone else. I can't remember who it was. I think Emma. But um, apparently Pioneer Town, like I, I know I've heard of it. I've definitely heard of it. Um, fast forward a little bit. When they go to the Invisible House, I've definitely heard of that before, which is outside of Pioneer Town. But anyways, it's near Joshua Tree, a Joshua Tree, so. Um, so we got Chelsea and Bree meeting. Oh god, guys, buckle the fuck up. So if you didn't watch the episode, buckle up. So she says, Um, I have no ill will. First of all, this is Bree. She's like, I want you to know I have no ill will. And I respect your family. And, you know, and she Chelsea's like, okay, you're freaking me out. Like, just spit it out, please. Like, what's going on? And and she said, well, Amanda asked me, so, you know, she says a friend of mine, asked me to go to um, lunch with her. Um, she was telling me about a friend of hers who saw Jeff making out in the lobby of a hotel. And... You got your heart drops at this point because this is like yikes and Chelsea says do you trust her like do you do you trust her like do you think she's being honest with you that she's not making this up or you know whatever and Bree says yes you know she's not necessarily my best friend but I do trust her and Chelsea just starts crying like what else do you what else can you do in this moment like, again, we've all been cheated on. I think a lot of us have probably experienced being cheated on. It's, what else do you do but cry, you know? Like, you start with crying. Because that's the first emotion you feel is sadness, right? And, and betrayal and all that. Me then, I can't speak for everybody else. Everyone else is different in how they react. Me, once I cry and I deal with that, they anger sets in because how for me it's like hey like you cheated on me blah, blah, blah. but the anger also sets in because like how dare you fucking make me cry because i don't want to cry and i especially don't want to cry over you and that's when the anger sets in chelsea's not there yet she's 
sad. This is her family. She has kids with this man. They've been together for how many years? Like, this is when you were like, the world I know is no longer the world I know. Ah, God. Um, she says, you know, as women, we have an intuition. So she definitely had an intuition. I don't know if she necessarily thought this, but she knew that something was off probably in their, in their marriage. She says she doesn't know what to do. And Bree says, let it sink in. And maybe, you know, this was a mistake or, you know, maybe you guys can make this work, you know, process what you're going through, figure out how you're going to deal with it. And maybe you guys can come out stronger than ever on the other end, you know? And and she's like, you know, or I can help you hide the book, bury the body. That's fine too. <laughs> she says, I came at you because I thought everything was perfect. This is what Chelsea says. She came on her, you know, with her family and family dynamic, thinking everything in her family dynamic was perfect. But here I am, like everyone else. Let me say this. Like, I understand what she's saying here because, like, I'm no different than anyone else now, right? But this is what I mean. Never think you're no different. Never think your man is no different. I've learned that. I thought that with my ex-husband. I thought that with my current boyfriend, too. I mean, I, I think I was a little more jaded with my current relationship because I had already been through hell and back with my, with my last relationship. But I learned with him, my last, my ex-husband, that there is no such thing as a perfect man, that there is no such thing as this perfect relationship because they are no different than anyone else. And there is no relationship that is no different than anyone else. I put that man on a pedestal and I should never have because then he took that and he abused that, you know? No man deserves that. Honestly, it doesn't even matter if you have kids with him. Never think. Always be a step ahead. I think that's what I'm trying to say, just be a step ahead. Um, so then when this shit hits the fan, if it hits the fan, you're prepared. Somewhat. Partially. Anyway. So, we're going to take a, go, go to a different direction here and head to Pioneer Town. There is literally one house in this whole, I, I kid you not, it felt like there was only one house in this whole town. There isn't. There is the actual town um, that I guess people, I don't know if people necessarily live in Pioneer Town, but probably live on the outskirts of Pioneer Town. But it feels like there's only one house in this whole town. And Chriselle calls, though, because I think at this point we had um, Amanda, Mary, Nicole. That's all we had at that point. And we're kind of waiting for everybody else, right? But Chriselle Chris calls Alana and says, listen, I, I need to stay here for Chelsea. Chelsea's going through something right now. I'm not going to say what that is. It's not my place to say what that is. Um, but like, we need to stay here with her. And I guess Emma's also staying back as well. I don't know if Emma was going to go, but Emma stays back. On, um, she never shows up. So I'm going to assume. Um, we're at Bray's house. Um, that is apparently falling apart. So we are going to head back to Pioneer Town. We're, good. We're with Brie currently. Her house is falling apart, y'all. She moved out of this house. Um, I think Nick bought her a new house. <laughs> so, um, we, the, this house, I think, is mold, mold, and more mold and falling apart. Like, it's not safe for a young kid to be in anyways. Of course, Nick should buy her a house. What do you mean? Anyway. So, she is going to potentially sue the sellers due to false, um, failure, sorry, not false, failure to disclose. This, like, whatever work that they did in this house is not, there's no permits 
for anything that was done in the house, which that is illegal. So that right there is grounds for pursuing, right? And she definitely has a case. Even Jason says, like, you don't even have a case. But the floors are cracking. And there is water damage, like, on the wall. And Jason says, yeah, an inspector wouldn't have even seen this. Like, at all, wouldn't have seen this. And Jason doesn't think it's a huge issue, though. Like, he's like, on a scale of 1 to 10, of bad to worse. <laughs> this is like a three. He doesn't think it's that bad. It's all, it can all be remedied. But, um, of course, for Bree, she thinks it's bad. But all in all, really and truly, it's not that bad. It really, and I agree with him, it's not that bad. She has a case out of her way due to the fact that this house is not, there's no permits for any renovation or anything that was done in this house. So that, that alone, you're, you're good. But this house can be repaired. They're kind of saying, like, all in all, the repairs would probably cost, because I think Romaine was here as well, um, would probably cost, like, I think Romaine said 30000 which isn't bad. And, like, this could be done in no time. And then you can get the house on the market. No biggie. So... Now, now we are back in Pioneer Town, and her and her husband um have their first date here in Pioneer Town, and they also got married in Pioneer Town. So you know, there's there's a connection to this town for them. Then this random guy named Jack walks up to them, and they're like, "So, uh, are any of you ladies single?" Ew, get away from me, you psycho. <laughs> Is that going to get any of your numbers? No, the fuck you can't. But I think, I think Amanda gives her his number. <laughs> Seriously. But anyway, or gives him her number. Um, he's like, well, you know what they say about big buckles. Overcompensation? Is that what they say? Like, get out of here. Ew. Anyway, um, so Amanda has dated a member of InSync before. She's kind of going through like her 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 past dating history, and she's dated a member of InSync. And I'm like, oh my god, who? Okay, if no one knows this about me, I'ma tell you. I'm a huge InSync girly. Back in the 90s and early aughts when we were deciding whose team you on, InSync or Backstreet Boys, a thousand percent it was InSync for me. I love Backstreet Boys, don't get me wrong, but InSync, a thousand percent. I am an InSync girly. I love them all. I love Justin. I love JC. I love Joey. I love Chris. I, I love Lance. I love them all. I love everybody. Okay. I love them. So when I found out that she dated a guy from NSYNC, I'm like, who? I need to know who. And I don't know if anyone else guessed, because I'm going to say who. I'm going to tell you who it is. But I guessed it was probably JC. She gives me JC vibes that she would definitely be attracted to JC. And JC, JC is the hottest one there. Come on. And let's be real. I mean, Justin's hot too, but JC for me. Always JC for me. Ugh. He's a hot guy there. She did JC. Girl, get yours. <laughs> I mean, who else? Really truly. I mean, I love Joey. But Joey's gotten hotter now. <laughs> like, but yeah, JC, man. Damn. Okay. Alright. So anyway, that um so that's that. So then we're back at the house for dinner and we got a cowbell, just cowbell. And we got Jono, not to be confused with Jono from Below Deck, Jono with two ones, who is going to be teaching us line dancing. Then we're riding a bull. Only Mary and Cole ride the bull, though. Um, and 
then they have dinner, and then we find out that there's something that's going on with Emma that Nicole's kind of bringing up. And when Amanda catches on about what it is she's saying, she said, Nicole, stop talking. Nicole, stop talking. She's like, you've literally mended fences. Stop talking. But it's never quite set to like told like what it is. I'm going to have a theory at this point. I still don't know. I've, I've gotten fairly far in the episodes, but I still don't know what it is. I don't know if that ever comes up, Um, but I suspect that Emma was involved with a married man. That's the gist of what Nicole was kind of saying, even though she wasn't really saying it. But that's what I'm under. That's my. That's what I'm feeling. That Emma, no, knowingly, was involved with a married man. Yikes. And it actually pisses me off more for what's about to come throughout these episodes with Emma that I'm like, you have a fucking leg to stand on. I don't want to go too far ahead, but let's just say Emma wants to create conspiracy theories about Bree's intentions. And it's like, ma'am, you don't have a leg to stand on. You are out here potentially having sex with married men and you want to say anything about anyone's true intentions. Get out of here with your fucking nonsense. I want someone to say something now. Nicole, honey, I like you a little more. It's time. Leak that shit out. Just do it. (laughs) Like, honestly. But anyway. Back in LA, we were with, um, Chelsea and Grishel. And Chelsea didn't want to go. She didn't want to ruin what Alana had going on, obviously, with her bad mood right now, which is understandable. And she says she doesn't want to cry, but just let that out. Let it out. Cry. Feel every emotion. Because eventually the tears are going to turn to anger. Trust me. He apparently would tell her that, you know, she didn't have to work, you know, she just does it for fun, which she says really hurts her. She maybe doesn't need to work because you make good money, but she wants to work. She wants to be able to contribute to the home, to society. And maybe like, she doesn't want to be a stay-at-home mom. Not everyone is equipped to be a stay-at-home mom or wants to be, and that's okay, and that's okay for people who do, but Chelsea doesn't give me the vibes of a person who wants to be a stay-at-home mom, she wants to get out there, she wants to, she wants to do something, and that's okay, and he's an asshole for thinking that she's just doing this for fun, like, go fuck yourself, and she says, um, I guess it was too much for him, I'm, I'm gonna have some choice words in a minute for that, And she says, my heart isn't broken. It's shattered into a million pieces. And again, I think that's a feeling that unfortunately a lot of us understand. But that is it for this episode. With her saying that, I guess that was too much for him. If a man has to dim your light, he is not a man. He is barely human. Is is you know. He should not want to dim your light. He should want to support whatever it is you want to do, and does so with pride. Does so and says that's my wife, and he didn't do that for her. Instead, he went and cheated on you instead with a woman who has to know he's a married man. It's not like we haven't seen him on the show. I know what this man looks like. How does someone know what this man looks like? And not only that, LA is a very small place. Everyone knows everybody. This woman has to know, right? So shame on her. But it's like, 
this man should want to uplift his wife and cheer her on in anything she does. Instead, he has a cowardly root and completely uproots his family instead. Screw him. She can do so much better, and she will. She it may not feel that way right now, but she will. But that is it for this episode. We're going to take another quick break here, and when we come back, we will talk about the final episode in this episode, and that is episode six. And I am back. So let's do the final episode in this episode, and that is episode six, which is titled, Don't Rain on My Parade. Yep. Okay, so back in Joshua Tree, we are touring a house. Well, we're yeah, in Joshua Tree, not Pioneer Town. And this is the Invisible House, which is really, really cool. The Invisible House is so cool. I don't know if I've been inside this house before, like seen inside the house before, but the Invisible House is so cool. It's so cool. It's cool as that. I feel like I have been. Not me physically, but I feel like, um, Maybe um million million dollar listing LA, they may have gone into the Invisible House before. It's so cool. It's such a cool house. Anyway, they kind of say you know everyone from Drake and you two have stayed in this house. Like a lot of people have stayed in this house. And while Amanda is kind of climbing some rocks because they kind of go to the the um the um primary suite and you can kind of see like the rocks and stuff so she goes out and climbs the rocks and basically is left to Stellana and Nicole and by the way Mary's not here because Mary had to go get breast surgery one of her boobs deflated so um, so Alana tells Nicole you know maybe you need to go to the source maybe talk to Emma about what you heard and you know, it's kind of go do that, and she isn't quite sure if she wants to do that because her and Emma are friends. So Bree has gone blonde. Now I don't know if she officially has gone blonde or if it's just a wig, but she's gone blonde because she's gonna be showing a house to her ex-husband, and she says apparently um you really like blondes. I think he cheated on her with a blonde girl. Yeah, so he. He says to her while they're kind of touring this house that he's missing her and he still loves her. That's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> but that's basically how she kind of takes it. It's like, okay, and we want me to do that information. Like, this is never going to happen again. She's never going to go backwards. Come on. Um, yeah. It's always, it's always when a man cheats. Is when they find out what they've missed out on. Isn't that amazing? Men, how about you just don't cheat and like love on the woman you have from the jump? Just a thought. Anyways. Um then he literally takes her car on a joyride. Like he's like running to her car and she's like, no, no. She's like running after because apparently they've crashed each other's cars before by accident. Um, so he, she's like, great. Like he literally took her car and drives off in her car that Nick probably bought her. And that's fine. What else is Nick good for if not to buy her houses and a car and give her a baby? You know, like I wouldn't not, I would not have a baby with him, but if you want to give me the cars and the house, like by all means, like you have a million jobs anyway. It's like, whatever. <laughs> but then we, got Amanda visiting Mary post-surgery and you know she's recovering f well from it then she tells us a little bit of a sad story trigger warning for everything that's about to happen she got home and they had to take one of the dogs I can't remember which dog it was the one that starts with a Z I think um, to the vet because Romaine idiot gave this dog grapes. Apparently, I did not know this. Grapes are poisonous for dogs. 
dummy. <laughs> um, and then she says that Jason had to take Nico to the vet because he's not doing well. And then Chriselle comes by and Chriselle has to get her, um, I think has to get her boobs redone too because her implant is folded. My God. I mean, I'm blessed with natural boobs, I guess. And I don't have to worry about, I mean, I would like them to be perkier, but anyway, it's fine. I can't imagine. <laughs> Like, how the fuck does your implant fold in itself, you know? Like, how does that happen? Honestly, people who have implants, I'm actually curious. Like, how does that happen? I understand the inflation, like, that I know can happen, depending on what's going on. Like, you know, that can just happen in, 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 in the next step. But how does it just fold in and it's, like, fold in? on itself. Like, how does that happen? I've never heard that. That's nuts. And apparently, Mary's, like, deflated, yes, but it actually exploded in her boobie. That can't be safe, man. I'm, that can't be safe. Anyway, so we are at a house with Rochelle, and this house apparently had a major major leak in this house, water leak. So here's what happened. I sense a lawsuit, by the way. The homeowners burn home. The agent who worked on this house prior, or is technically still part of this house, we'll get to it, had a showing, left the fireplace on, left this, went on vacation or something for four days, and because there is a sprinkler right above the fireplace, I guess it reached maximum heat and it turned on and was running for God knows how long. And a neighbor of the homeowners got a uh, text them, text them to say, um, you guys, your, wa- your house is crying. Like, we saw the video, the water is just, it's like, it's like a waterfall. It was like a freaking waterfall. It was in, that's insane. That's the kind of cases that we get in my office, is stuff like that. Oh my God, my boss would love a case just like that. Like, if something like that happened, like, my God, this is insane. So, the other part of it is so they had to have the repair, the repairs done, obviously, it took four months. Most of that was covered by the insurance company, but the repairs are probably somewhere in the $200,000 range. Now, if people don't quite understand or haven't had this happen or you haven't dealt with that before, when you have something like this happen, and obviously, yes, the insurance company is going to cover that, you're always going to have uninsured losses, whatever that amount may be. That can change depending on the situation, your policy, all of that. You're always going to have uninsured losses. And you can, like, if you decide, probably what's going to happen in this situation, I imagine, is the insurance company is going to cover it, yes, but the insurance company is going to go after the outfall party, and that's going to be the agent and the brokerage, and they're going to probably start a segregation case, which basically means that the insurance company is the one that is trying to recover their losses. That's all that was going to happen here. And you could potentially get your uninsured losses covered in that, because you always work with, in this case, the insurance company would appoint representation lawyer, and the lawyer would work with the homeowners as well. And that potentially could happen, but they could get some sort of percentage of their uninsured losses covered by the at-fault party. This is a mess, and I hope they sue. Like, what the hell? 
So, or I think the insurance company gets their money back. So, the problem is, though, when this happened, the house was in escrow. And it technically still is. The potential buyer was going to hold this in escrow, see if they wanted to still purchase the house after the repairs. And that is technically an escrow that is with the agent who caused all of this drama in the first place. And Chriselle was not told this. And Chriselle's like, oh, okay. Like, she feels, and I 100% agree with her, that agent does not deserve the commission from this house. Because you, no way. This is no way. And, um, Chriselle says, okay, well, what we'll do is I will be here to support you through whatever happens. If the buyer decides they still want to go through with this, then I will help you through that. If the buyer decides they no longer want to go through with this, well, then we'll get you in a listening agreement and we'll get this ball rolling. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out how this turns out with that um, in another episode. So apparently, which I don't remember, this, I do remember this, there was, if no one else remembers, major flooding in California. There was record amount of rain in in California um, earlier this year. And um, it was causing major flooding. We were also dealing with that over here in Toronto during the summer as well. Um, we had record amount of rain as well in the space of a few days. And we had major flooding in Toronto. Thank God I was home and not in Toronto when that happened. And um, yeah, because it was an absolute mess. And there was a worry it was going to happen again. And trust, when I say there has been ricochet effects ever since. <laughs> um, not the first time this has happened. It's definitely happened plenty of times. It's horrible. So, Amanda currently has a broker's open while this is all going on. Not great. Not great timing. And they do suspect that the broker's open is most likely going to be a flop because of the rain. So, we're probably going to have to redo this. So, we basically have like most of the old group agents here, along with Jason. There was a few different agents that showed up, but not many. And and Chelsea did show up as well, kind of her first time working since everything has come to light for her. And she hasn't talked to her husband about anything yet. He doesn't know that she knows. I love that. I love that feeling of I know shit about you that you don't know I know. Oh God, nothing. Ooh, to the lighting. Emma says, um, I have a bite mark on her arm. And <laughs> girl, what do you do? Who is that from? Like, what the hell? Is this biting your arm? I feel like that happened to me once. My ex husband did that to me, bit me on my arm. It's like, are you an animal? Like, in the moment, you're all about it. After the fact, it's like, I'm sorry. Were you raised by animals? Like, what's going on here? Like, no, thank you. Anyway, we are going to be, like I said, we'll be doing another Rogers Open due to the, the rain. So we're with Rochelle and Emma and Chelsea, and they throw fortune cookies up in the air. And whatever one comes closer to you, your fortune. Chelsea's one didn't have a fucking fortune. You should have thought this one through. This is a little better. And um, she's feeling really embarrassed and vulnerable right now. And they kind of say to her, like, you should not be the one who feels any of these things. He should. He's the one that fucked up. He's the one that did it. Not you. And Corshell tells her, like, you will look back at this and you will get through it. You are, you're going to get through it. And you're, you know, you're going to look back at this and you're going to be like, how could I have ever been in that, you know? You're going to be fine. 
doesn't feel like that way now, but you will be. And they, I loved this. I love this line. They said, sometimes you have to be in the dark, right? To see the light. And I loved that. I was perfect. Then Emma, this is when I started to be pissed with Emma and the pissed feeling will continue. She has to open up her big fucking mouth to question Bree's intentions for telling Chelsea. Because because of what Chelsea did, you think Bree is that manipulative, that cold, that that's what she was... <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, but now we're creating tension. Now we're creating doubts in Chelsea's head. And that's the last thing I think Chelsea needs to deal with right now. But Chelsea says, call her now. And she says, like, call the bitch, call the bitch right now. Thanks, Emma. Thank you. Like, I feel like Emma needs, she thrives on the drama and can't just leave well enough alone. And I'm going to, trust me, <laughs> that's the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more that happens within these episodes with Emma and her just, Mary, Mary, Chelsea isn't the pot stirrer or the shit starter. It's Emma. Emma is. And it's presented right here for you, for everybody. I'm so mad. But anyway. That is it for this episode, and that is it for our episode. So again, the next thing that I'm planning to do is um, probably the B90 HEA. Um, that's probably coming up next. I think that's what I said I was going to do. So if we're going to do B90, that's what you'll get next. And um, and yeah, that is it for this episode. So if you like what you heard, please rate, review the podcast on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Also, don't forget that uh, you can also share us with everyone in your life if you really love us. And I do want to read those reviews. I'm definitely getting five-star ratings, but I want to read those reviews. So send me those reviews and I will read those four and five star reviews on the podcast. Also, we're on every one of your favorite podcast apps, every one of them, including you can find us on YouTube at Reality Tea Times 2. If you want to connect with us, you can do so by going to either Facebook or Instagram at Reality Tea Times 2. You can also find us on Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, and Reality T Times Two Pod. We also have our email, which is at Reality T Times Two at Hotmail.com. Definitely want to hear from you guys. And we also have our new website where you can listen to all of these episodes. You can review the podcasts on there as well. You can connect with me in any way all the stuff. It's all there. And you can find me there at www.realitytimes2, all spelled out, um, dot podpage.io. It's there. And don't forget, I also have my other podcast with my friend Mikkel, Next Week Podcast, where we talk about all kinds of different topics. Um, but you can find us on any of your favorite podcast apps over there as well. Or you can also go to YouTube um, and you can go to Next Take Podcast as well as our website, which is solo.to forward slash Next Take Podcast. Um, so yeah, there's with that and that's basically that. And again, don't forget if all of this information is overwhelming, we do have all of the links everything in our show notes but that is it for now guys thanks bye